I greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior. Welcome to the virtual worship service for Massey's Chapel United Methodist Church in Durham, North Carolina on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. I am Reverend Cheryl Lawrence, the pastor of Massey's Chapel, and I'm glad that you joined us today. Before we get started, we're going to light a candle to symbolize the presence of Christ in our midst, and I invite you to do this at home as well. Hear now this reading of Psalm 130, verses 5 to 6. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in His word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Hear now this reading of Psalm 139, 1 through 12. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hear now this reading of selected verses from the 8th chapter of Romans, and this is Paul's letter, the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome. He writes, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are you a patient person? In our scripture, Paul ties patience with hope. A hopeful person is a patient person. An impatient person gets upset when waiting is forced on her or him, as it so often is. A patient person lives in the moment, while an impatient person wants to jump ahead to the future. Patient, hopeful waiting is open-ended, meaning one's attitude and actions are open to what God is bringing. However, this requires a belief that God is bringing something good in the world and in our personal lives, even if we cannot perceive it in the moment. 
open-ended hopeful waiting is hard because we tend to wait for something that we wish would happen much of our waiting is filled with wishing i wish they would develop a vaccine for covid 19. i wish i could be safely indoors again with my family i wish businesses would reopen i wish there were a different president or governor or mayor or pastor <laughs> i wish i had a different job and now that is not my personal wish I wish my daughter or my son would do this or that. We are full of wishes and our waiting gets tangled in those wishes. Instead of open-ended, hopeful, patient waiting for God to act, our impatience makes us want to control the future. Our impatience makes us want to take matters that we can't really control into our own hands to make the future go in a very specific direction. If what we want does not happen, or if it takes a very long time to happen, we get disappointed and we can even slip into despair. And also, can you perceive how our wishes tend to be connected with our fears? And this is not the hopeful waiting that Paul describes. Paul was not filled with wishes. If he had been, they might have sounded something like this. I wish they would let me out of prison. I wish the persecution of Christians would stop. I wish we had a different emperor or governor. I wish people would do what I tell them to do. Paul's hope and his waiting were not tangled up in his wishes. Instead, they were tied to his trust that God would act in God's own time and way. Paul trusted that God's scriptural promises would be fulfilled. Paul knew, of course, that Jesus never promised that Christians would not suffer. In fact, Jesus warned that they would. Jesus never promised Christians would not get sick and die or that our loved ones would not get sick and die. What Jesus did promise was his presence with believers. He promised when we seek first the kingdom of God that our needs would be met. Jesus promised his love and he promised that his followers would share his resurrection. And really, resurrection is what this passage from Romans is about. Christians are to wait patiently and hopefully for the new heaven and new earth that Jesus promised. The promise that whoever believes in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. That is our ultimate hope, without which all of our earthly hopes would be hollow. Our earthly hopes would be hollow if we thought that death was the end of everything. However, however, most of us have no problem waiting with patience for the life to come. Unless we are very old, our suffering in this life tends not to be so severe that we place all of our hope in our life to come. But, you know, that hasn't always been true for Christians. So, while we are in this life, how do we move from impatient waiting that wants to control outcomes to patient, open-ended, hopeful waiting for God? How do we wait rightly during this pandemic? Well, I think first we practice living in the moment, trusting that God is bringing something good. And this does take practice. To wait rightly is to believe that God is a part of everything and that whatever comes, whatever comes, God is always with us. Living in the moment, we do the things that we are supposed to do and we watch for opportunities to bless others. So often, joy is found in our moments of blessing and serving others. We express our wishes to God in prayer, and then 
we let go of them each day, perhaps each hour. To wait rightly is to seek out the things that bring us gratitude and peace. Only you know what those things are for you, but they often are quite small. The beauty of a flower, the taste of a ripe tomato or a peach, the sound of birds singing or of a beautiful musical instrument being played, even enjoying the soft warmth of our dog or cat's fur as we're stroking it. And we wait together. The church is God's gift to us so that we might rejoice with each other, bear one another's burdens, and travel through this life with godly company. And finally, to wait rightly, we trust that God is at work in our lives in the life of our church, in the life of our country, and indeed the world. God works through bad to bring about good, and God always has the final word for his people. We hope for what we do not see, and we wait for it with patience, trusting that good things will happen in God's time and in God's way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive now this blessing. May the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you. And may God fill you with his own hope and patience. Amen.